this very interesting event and would like to give the floor to Mr. Simeon Jankov, who was uh, the person with who uh, I used to work back in the days in the Ministry of Finance and um, also he's a very, uh, very good economist and probably he would tell you a little bit more about uh, himself now, what he's doing and also to moderate this event. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rosice, and indeed we've worked with you and many of the other panelists uh, in difficult times of the previous crisis. So uh, uh, we've uh, become veterans in how to deal with uh, crisis, although this one is uh, presenting us with uh, different types of challenges uh, than the um, Eurozone crisis, and it is still, uh, it is still unfolding. Um, so my task uh, initially is just to outline uh, for us uh, three or four of the, major, of the major trends that are taking place uh, now, not just uh, with the coronavirus, but also some of the global trends that affect uh, our economy as well as our labor market. And then we'll, um, we'll start from there, more specifically about uh, the influences of these trends on uh, Stara Zagora, the economy, and... Uh, social life as well. Um, so let me just outline uh, three main uh, trends that I see uh, globally having an effect uh, on, uh, on our economy. First, of course, and uh, with us for some time uh, still, is the situation with the virus, which already has affected uh, the Bulgarian economy and actually the global economy in very significant uh, uh, ways. Uh, I'll speak of two of them uh, having in mind our discussion today, specifically on Stara Zagora. One is uh, the sectoral influence, that there are some sectors that are severely affected by, uh, by the crisis and will continue to be severely affected for uh, some time to come, even after vaccines. Um, so tourism, transport, uh, but also a number of sectors uh, um, uh, where there is some sort of uh, social interaction. Uh, and the number of sectors uh, and the share of them in the economy differs somewhat across countries, but since Europe is so tightly integrated, uh, it has a lot more effect in the European economy than in some of the other economies in, uh, in, uh, in the world. And we will have a discussion on which of these sectors uh, are particularly affected in, uh, in the municipality of, uh, of Stara Zagora. The second trend, which is also a European uh, uh, phenomenon to a large extent, is uh, the movement of people. As the crisis uh, hit, um, uh, it uh, both the measures, but also the effect of the crisis of the virus uh, is uh, different across, somewhat different across different countries. So we saw rapidly uh, a number of people moving across borders. Uh, so migration. Um, numbers are still... Um, a bit fuzzy since people uh, have intentions to go back uh, sometimes, sometimes don't, but the initial numbers for Bulgaria suggest that somewhere between 200,000 and 300,000 uh, Bulgarians have returned home, uh, either temporarily or, or for a longer period, uh, and are, if you like, looking for a new way of life, uh, as uh, particularly these of our compatriots coming from um, uh, the UK, uh, the double hit between the virus and Brexit may be looking for new opportunities, but also a number of other Bulgarians working in uh, European countries. And this is an opportunity if, uh, if we manage to develop new sectors or expand existing sectors with the help of um, our partners in the European Union, the European Investment Bank, uh, to keep some of these uh, uh, Bulgarians uh, at home. So for me, this is quite, uh, quite important and an opportunity. The second trend specific to uh, Stara Zagora, Bulgaria more generally, of course, is the greening of the economy and something which some of the other panelists um, will have a lot more to, um, uh, to say. Uh, this is particularly important for a region like Stara Zagora, where a lot of our energy production um, comes, uh, comes from. So the shift to uh, low carbon uh, base uh, uh, economy is a priority for us in the next few years. Uh, I think our ex-deputy prime minister and uh, uh, minister uh, Lili Pavlova will say uh, things of how, how this can be assisted by our partners, among others. Just also to make a side point that uh, 
presenting today from uh, from the United States, um, we we still should uh, think of some base of uh, of the energy sector in terms of conventional energy because you see what happens if uh, in Texas I'm talking about Texas now where a severe storm basically knocks out the whole economy for, for nearly a month, uh, which does not have, uh, um, for one reason or another, much of a stable conventional uh, energy um, uh, in terms of sources. So clearly some sort of, uh, of basis where Stara Zagora does provide uh, needs to remain in place for the years to, um, uh, to come. And then the final trend, uh, which uh, which uh, affects uh, particularly Eastern Europe, uh, and which uh, we talk probably least about, is the decoupling of the global economy between the United States and Europe on the one hand, and China on the other. On the other hand, um, to me, this is an important uh, trend, not just in global trade and investment, but because in this decoupling, which started before the uh, virus or before the current crisis as a result of uh, policies both from uh, on the side of the White House here in Washington as well as in uh, in uh, Brussels and is continuing now it will provide opportunities for countries near the main uh, markets or countries like Bulgaria to be able to attract the type of businesses in the global value chains that perhaps previously it was difficult to do so given the competitiveness of uh, certain uh, industries in China. So that's also an opportunity. And I'll finish here with uh, this opportunity for me is coupled with the first point that I made on a number of uh, well-trained uh, Bulgarians who are currently back uh, home in Bulgaria, in Stara Zagora, uh, from uh, some years of experience in Spain, in Germany, in France, in England, and so on. I think uh, this provides an opportunity for us to re-engineer our economy, if you like, also at the regional level. And by, uh, by doing so, um, I think both uh, attract these people with higher, higher experience and uh, good productivity, but also create industries that perhaps we currently do not, uh, uh, do not have. So uh, Rosica, I'll stop here so that we can get to our next panelists on time and I'll make uh, comments uh, as we go along. Thank you. Thank you very much, much Mr. Diankov. Yes, indeed, we have to take advantage of everything what is happening now, um, taken um, uh, from the coronavirus uh, uh, and from the Brexit uh, as well. And we have to think about uh, um, how to um, create economy, uh, in particular, the economy of Sarasagoro, uh, which will be developed sustainably. Uh, so this is very important. That's why this first day um, we, sh we are focusing on how this sustainability is going to be financed. So um, I would like to give the floor to Ms. Iglika Vasilova, who will also give us a little bit of uh, information um, about uh, some trends, economic trends, and with also with, with respect to the coronavirus impact. Hello, hello from me too. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Stara Zagoro first for uh, your kind invitation and just to confirm that uh, these topics on uh, carbon neutral transformation on digitalization are also very high in the priorities of, uh, of uh, the institution that I represent, the International Monetary Fund. So, um, so my colleagues and myself were very much looking uh, forward also to the results of this um, of this seminar. Uh, all this uh, said, <clears throat> uh, I'm going to share my presentation. Hopefully, uh, <clears throat> hopefully you're able to see it now. Just to make it full screen. So uh, basically my, uh, my role uh, here would be just to give um, a snapshot of uh, the Bulgarian economy uh, overall and um, thus uh, present a basis, a framework for subsequent uh, discussions which are more specific to uh, Stara Zagora region and also um, which are also uh, uh, more uh, focused on um, on the topics um, uh, that are being discussed today, namely the green uh, transformation and uh, digitalization and possible possibilities. Um, 
talking about uh, 2020, of course. Uh, first, um, the year was marked by uh, two events uh, which are uh, very important for the Bulgarian economy. One is positive and the other one is uh, uh, negative. Uh, so the first one, uh, I think both are very clear. So this is the COVID-19 health crisis and um, the admission of the country in uh, the exchange rate uh, mechanism too, which is, which is the entry point or the, the waiting uh, room, as they call it, for uh, before the adoption of, uh, of the euro in uh, Bulgaria. So what are the implications and what, um, uh, what impact on uh, the economy did these two uh, big uh, shocks uh, have? Uh, concerning the COVID-19 crisis, it led um, to, uh, it actually put a break on um, rather robust economic performance in the past year so when we had uh, uh, growth rates of uh, over 3% uh, annually. Uh, for 2020, uh, we expected uh, the IMF projection was uh, to have a decline of uh, 4.6%. Percent uh, NSI recent uh, data on um, uh, the express uh, indicators uh, from the national accounts it shows that actually the the decline is somewhat smaller, which is good news. It's uh, 3.8, around 3.8. It's um, a calculation based on uh, NSI data, and it is uh, driven mainly by uh, a drop in demand, drop in um, uh, in domestic demand, private demand, uh, uh, both. Uh, consumption and investment, and also a huge decline in external demand, uh, which is uh, seen through the decline in, uh, in um, export uh, in the national accounts. Of course, this was partially compensated by lower imports, which is taken with a minus sign in the calculation of uh, the GDP. Uh, due to lower domestic demand, but also due to high fiscal uh, stimulus, which was uh, provided by, uh, by the government. Um, talking of the fiscal uh, stimulus, it was estimated uh, at around 2.5% uh, of uh, GDP by the Ministry of Finance for last uh, uh, year. It uh, included mainly um, this 60-40 uh, subsidy, uh, employment subsidy uh, program. Of course, a lot of um, health related uh, uh, spending, um, also uh, some measures in the revenue side, namely the, the cut in the VAT uh, rates in some uh, economic uh, activities. Um, and uh, a big package of, um, um, of uh, social, let's say, spending mainly um, directed towards the, the pensioners as, um, uh, um, as a very vulnerable part of uh, the population. Um, all, of course, uh, there, there was the uh, 700 million uh, level managed by the Bulgarian uh, uh, Development Bank of uh, Financial Instruments, also uh, EU funded um, measures. So these all uh, measures uh, uh, nationally or EU finance, they contributed to to um, dampen a little bit the, the impact of uh, the corona virus on uh, the economy. But uh, um, they at the same time, of course, led to higher uh, fiscal uh, deficit uh, or a fiscal deficit because uh, it was actually um, much lower uh, uh, in the previous year and due to uh, one of uh, events. So uh, nonetheless, we uh, think that the fiscal um, sector is uh, currently very stable in the country. This is reflected uh, both in the Eurobond uh, issue that um, was uh, quite uh, uh, favorably uh, priced, which happened in uh, September 2020. Also uh, in uh, current uh, placements of uh, domestic debts, even a couple of days ago, the uh, Fitch rating gave agency improved the um, uh, the outlook on um, on Bulgaria's uh, rating so uh, we could say that there is fiscal space still the finances are 
uh, very stable and there is room for further intervention in case, of course, they're, they're needed and, um, and uh, efficient um, as uh, in design and implementation. Um, so basically that is the suppressed um, domestic and uh, external demand led to lower GDP, uh, which was compensated by public expenditures, which worsened the fiscal, um, fiscal indicators, but also led to lower inflation which we estimated it at 1.3, but uh, it, um, I think the HICP inflation was 1.2. And also to dwindling current account uh, surplus, which is close to zero, marginally positive, mainly reflecting um, the drop in, uh, in um, export of services and of course drop in um, remittances from um, uh, from abroad. So this is uh, one part of um, the picture that uh, shapes the developments, uh, the key developments in 2020. The other part, the other big event is the ERM2 uh, accession, which of course um, uh, is a big, big positive um, event, uh, but entails no immediate um, changes because we um, have been operating around, uh, under a fixed uh, exchange uh, rate, so no changes there. Uh, of course, the good thing about it is that uh, the government has committed to another package of uh, structural uh, reforms, uh, which are uh, in various um, key areas, which is um, a positive development. And the other, uh, let's say, um, uh, development is that the ERM2 accession was coupled with um, uh, accession to or joining the banking, banking union, which um, uh, implied uh, uh, both direct supervision of um, the European Central Bank on um, a systematically important uh, credit institutions, but also um, also high representation of, um, uh, from BNB, from the Bulgarian National Bank at um, uh, ECB, uh, both supervisory, single supervisory and single resolution boards. There are some, also some um, additional fees that will be levied on banks and other additional uh, small changes, but they're uh, more or less uh, uh, compensated by other, other um, changes. Looking forward, what are the big, um, um, what are the prospects in the um, near and a little bit further uh, future? So basically they're highly uncertain. We do expect um, a recovery in the current year of 3.6% uh, GDP growth, but it will be very much dependent both on, um, uh, on the developments on the health um, uh, side, on the health uh, sector, how the coronavirus and the vaccination will, uh, will uh, actually evolve. And uh, it will also develop very much um, on, um, on the flexibility, on, on the decisiveness of the government to, to provide support if needed, and also uh, to fine tune the current measures in case they're somehow found to be ineffective or inefficient in some, some parts of their, their delivery. Um, over the medium term, we expect that um, um, domestic demand will um, um, rebound uh, strongly and it will to a large extent um, compensate for, um, uh, for uh, diminishing um, uh, fiscal support. Um, also, and uh, but uh, nonetheless, we don't see uh, a big rebound in um, GDP growth uh, due to um, some structural uh, challenges, uh, which uh, will remain uh, uh, will remain uh, in place if they are not tackled. One big opportunity to tackle these uh, challenges will, I'm sure will be discussed in uh, big details is the next generation EU uh, initiative which um, which pre presents a big opportunity to tackle those um, structural challenges related to labor 
um, shortages and uh, shortages of both physical labor and skills, and um, also um, some um, governance issues, which also um, put a break on uh, on um, the economy's potential for growth. So uh, yes, next generation EU is a big, big opportunity both to tackle those um, structural changes at uh, econ economy national level, but also at, um, at regional ev level. And especially for um, uh, Star of Zagora, where um, uh, the economy has a very specific um, uh, structure uh, which is very much uh, oriented towards the energy sector. Uh, so maybe these funds will provide the necessary vehicle for the economy to, to move uh, away from this dependence and develop uh, um, the sectors and the jobs, uh, hopefully, of the future. So basically, um, just a short resume of um, the, the main uh, channels um, and uh, the, the main um, yes channels aspects of the impact of uh, the covid on uh, on the economy this is uh, of course not um, bulgaria specific this is uh, uh, globally valid uh, so it was it resulted in a big collapse in demand also in supply but mainly on uh, on demand, uh, but this uh, decline was not even across uh, sectors. Um, as uh, Mr. Diankov uh, mentioned, uh, um, some of the sectors such as tourism, uh, transport, retail sales, um, I don't know, food uh, uh, supply, they were very hard hit by, um, by this uh, crisis, but there is also some sectors which saw an opportunity for development and maybe uh, there are some of these sectors um, such as um, machine building sectors which are also present in uh, in Stara Zagora and there might be um, an opportunity a link for them as well to 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 grab this um, this um, chance and to to build on it um, of course, this uh, impact was not even across sectors, but it was not um, even across uh, the individuals, the, the population as well. Um, so some of um, the people were harder fit, uh, sorry, harder uh, affected than other, uh, the low skilled uh, labor um, also, um, um, these other disadvantaged groups of population, they, they were more hit than, um, than, uh, than the rest, uh, than some other parts of the population. So there was a collapse and this collapse was not um, uh, evenly distributed, both in terms of uh, economic activities and uh, across individuals. Finally, just a summary of our main uh, uh, policy uh, recommendations. Um, so basically, um, the IMF supports the uh, fiscal um, measures undertaken by the, the government, and uh, we do think that uh, this is the first priority in the short term, uh, just to limit the long-term um, impact of the crisis on the economy. And then once this stage of um, acute um, health uh, crisis is overcome, there are some other priorities that need to be tackled. I touched upon, upon them, mainly related to, uh, to uh, the structural changes which are specific to the Bulgarian economy, but also um, to um, more generally speaking, making the economy more efficient. So both the government, uh, the state sector making uh, um, the, the revenue collection and uh, expenditures more efficient, but also uh, for the economy as a whole. So um, making it more if, um, smarter as, uh, as the term goes, uh, uh, but also greener and also um, more fairer or more inclusive uh, in order for um, more people to benefit from uh, from the growth 
And uh, all this uh, said, um, uh, of course, uh, this crisis, uh, it um, presented a lot of um, challenges, both on um, uh, economic and, um, uh, and for the society as a whole, but it also pre presents a lot of um, uh, opportunities for um, transformation and um, especially the um, uh, additional um, EU funds that have been um, uh, set aside, uh, they can be used um, as a good um, um, chance to, to make big changes, important changes, uh, both at national level, but also for the specific regions, especially the regions which um, uh, will be facing bigger challenges, um, especially with uh, the, the goals set in terms of green transition. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Uh, Vasileva. Thank you for a very interesting presentation. Indeed, yes, we have to think not only for the sectors that were very severely hit by the coronavirus, but as a region uh, here in Starzagora, we have to think also for uh, those specific sectors that need to be, um, um, uh, you know, making our economy uh, less um, zero car uh, carbon. Uh, so this uh, smooth transition need to be made by using the available funds. That is why um, I would like to give the floor to Ms. Elena uh, Pavlova to give us information about what kind of financial support there is um, for financing the future projects related to um, the carbon zero transformation in the region. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Rosica, uh, dear, dear Mr. Diankov, uh, uh, distinguished uh, and fellow speakers and dear participants. First of all, thank you very much for, um, for inviting me to join today's uh, conference. I think it's, uh, it's a very good opportunity to discuss uh, a topic of, of, of great importance for, for, all of, uh, for all of us. So thank you really colleagues from the municipality of Stara Zagora and also colleagues from the Regional Economic and Development Agency for this opportunity. Uh, as I said, uh, really building resilience and uh, competitiveness of the, um, of the EU economies and uh, achieving green and digital recovery, this is a, this is a very important topic. And also, uh, as we all know, this is, uh, this is a priority of the current Portuguese uh, presidency of the council, priorities which are, uh, which are shared by us, at, uh, by the European Investment Bank and the group. Uh, the, the decade to, till 2030 is, a, is a, in, indeed a critical decade. And uh, it is a critical decade for economic recovery, but also for, for climate and for environment. Um, therefore, the target of 55% um, emission reduction target, which was set uh, uh, by the EU, it's, uh, it's a very positive step in the right direction. Uh, but to achieve this target, significant investments uh, uh, in the magnitude of trillions are needed uh, in order uh, to, be, to be successful um, in achieving this, uh, this target. So uh, while in the European budget, there are a lot of instruments that support uh, this kind of investments like just transition mechanism, uh, recovery and resilience facility and others. Uh, uh, I, and where we as a European bank uh, will be key implementing partner of the European Commission and also of the member states uh, uh, to, to implement those, for those facilities. Uh, of course, we can offer on the top uh, additional financial and advisory uh, capacity and resources to support the preparation and the implementation uh, of the national plans. Um, as, uh, as we know that uh, recovery and resilience instruments uh, under the, this instrument, each national recovery and sustainability plan will have uh, to set aside at least 37% of the budget for climate. So, uh, our experience, our different instruments, uh, financial instruments, and our uh, 
special, uh, very special um, advisory capacity, technical assistance and advisory capacity uh, are there to support uh, preparation and uh, building a strong pipeline of project. And also we are ready to, uh, to provide support for the implementation of, uh, of the national uh, plans. And our teams currently are discussing with, with all our member states, including with the Bulgarian authorities, how we can cooperate and how we can support the implementation uh, of the plan and uh, really to provide necessary support to build, to build a strong line, uh, uh, pipeline of projects for, for this. Uh, we are in really in advanced discussions with uh, with Bulgarian authorities, and uh, I hope we will be able together to identify uh, really the best the best way how we can uh, support. Uh, as we know, cohesion countries like Bulgaria and, and all other cohesion countries are much more focused on grant funding rather than on financial instruments and in general in uh, repairable financing. But uh, we do believe that there are opportunities, uh, notably thanks to, to a large amount of grants which uh, were made available to, to Bulgaria and to, and to cohesion countries in the context of the new multiannual financial program in the next generation EU. Uh, we have some of them like uh, recovery and resilience facilities which have to be committed within very short deadlines. So financial instruments uh, are really a very good way to maximize the impact of the grant funding by mobilizing private sector resources in order really to reach more final beneficiaries and to be able to cover a larger scope of activities and investments much needed in, in regions like Stara Zagora. Um, this, this is the only way, in fact, if we want to, to reach all these targets or goals and at the same time to make sure that we have a just transition uh, for, for the regions, for the businesses, for the economies. So uh, really we do believe that it is now the right time to build expertise uh, in the country by investing more funds and really, and resources into this kind of financial instruments and attracting private sector financing as well. Uh, we do, we as, as a group, the bank and the European Investment Fund, we do have the resources really to support the design and deployment of uh, such, uh, such instruments, also to, with the support of uh, uh, with, uh, our European inv uh, Investment Advisory Hub and FICOMPASS. Uh, we as a climate bank, uh, as the European Climate Bank, uh, our priority is, is really to support the implementation of the European Green Deals with, uh, with the variety of the financing tool and advisory activities we, we have. We, as a climate bank, set ambitious also, ambitious climate targets, and we are already well on the way um, in achieving them, like phasing out uh, unabated fossil fuel energy uh, financing, aligning all our activities with the goals of the um, Paris Agreement uh, already this year, dedicated dedicating at least 50% of our lending to climate and environmental sustainability. And throughout the decade to 2030, our aim is to mobilize 1 trillion euro of investment in support of, 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 those, of those specific targets, which, uh, which we have. So uh, really the, uh, and in order, and in order really to, to achieve this, of course, uh, we, we have to unite our efforts. Already in 2020, uh, we, uh, we have extended our financing to, uh, to environmental projects up to 26 billion euro only last year, which is already 40% of our overall financing and uh, uh, more to come. The, our plan is really to, to, to increase. Uh, last year, we also adopted a climate bank roadmap, which uh, lays down, the, lays down the, uh, the principles how to achieve our climate ambitions. And our roadmap is the blueprint we propose to tackle the crisis and to make sure that the recovery from the pandemic is, uh, is green and also digital. Uh, and uh, this really particularly means that uh, we are going to support all member states, public bodies, regional authorities, 
financial institutions and also directly corporates in identifying really what are the opportunities, uh, helping them addressing financing gaps that uh, really restrict uh, market development uh, through our different uh, instruments and also through our technical and advisory support uh, and uh, different facilities we do have uh, uh, in place. We will focus on clean energy, uh, innovative technologies, digital technologies, which modernize uh, industries. Uh, and of course, we will introduce new tools, re really that draw on robust climate data to better understand really the, the climate risks and how, how they could be overcome. Uh, and uh, I'm, we, are, we are really glad that Bulgaria um, has committed itself to, to the goals of the Paris Agreement uh, in this collective effort uh, and uh, really trying to, and we have to look in these uh, investments in climate and uh, green recovery as an opportunity to, to increase competitiveness of our industries, to create the jobs uh, and also uh, to, to support the growth. We have one very good example, which could be replicated also in, in regions here like, so like Stara Zagora, example of Katsame Plovdiv. Uh, we provided support of 65 million euro for, uh, with, a, with a loan to upgrade the processes of, uh, and the use of zinc and lead from recycled materials like uh, batteries. So this is, this is an excellent example of how we contribute to just transition and at the same time financing uh, an innovative um, company, which is, which is a lead supplier. Also, our climate um, bank roadmap has a big social element because uh, really we pledge to, to help communities uh, whose economies uh, may be hurt as they turn away from dependence on uh, energy incentive industries such as coal mining and steel production, exactly the case we have in, in the region of Stara Zagora. So what we will do, we will put much more resources, uh, and financial and human resources into just transition, which offers really trainings, jobs, advisory to those people and businesses uh, that, that might change as we move away from, uh, from certain sectors of, uh, of the economy as we are really committed to, to leave no one behind in this, in this transition and, this just, and make sure that the transition is just uh, on our long-term ambitions to have uh, by 2050 Europe being first climate neutral continent. So in order to, to achieve this, uh, we, we, will have, we will have uh, to use uh, different instruments like the just transition mechanism, a very targeted support uh, for coal mining regions uh, where we can provide this, uh, uh, this support. The bank will play central role in the implementation of all three pillars of the just transition. Pillar one, the just transition fund, really providing support for skills development, uh, qualifications, uh, new competencies, new creation of new businesses and, uh, and startups. Uh, supporting SMEs, uh, so we are there to provide the necessary co-financing as part of the Just Transition Fund. For the second pillar, uh, which is mainly focusing on private sector, uh, which will be deployed uh, within the framework of, um, of InvestEU, and InvestEU, uh, as you know, will be managed 75% of the overall InvestEU budget will be managed by by the European Investment Bank. So this is really a targeted support which we are going to, uh, to provide to, to the private sector. And third pillar of the just transition mechanism, which is so-called public sector loan facility. Uh, it is 100% managed by, by the bank and it uh, consists of uh, loans targeting public sector and uh, regional and local authorities. Uh, and, uh, and of course, it will be backed by uh, European uh, grants from the European Commission as well. And as I already mentioned, on the top of all of this, uh, with the implementation of the three pillars, we will be also mobilizing our advisory, technical and financial advisory services to support preparation of the uh, of, of eligible projects for, uh, for, for the just transition uh, regions, 
and also we can provide support in implementation of those of those projects. Um, and in specifically in Bulgaria, of course, we are we are fully committed to support both public and private uh, uh, sectors and authorities uh, really in uh, in implementation of, of those different projects and plans, and also supporting them developing the plan the, the plans in order to to be successful. We have already good experience through Jaspers supporting coal mining regions like Stara Zagora. The same the same. Uh, approach is available and we are open to support Stara Zagora and other coal mining regions in, uh, uh, in, preparing, uh, in preparing plans and projects. Like we have one very good example of our flagship advisory products, which is called ELENA, which is European Local Energy Assistance, joint initiative with the, with the European Commission. So through ELENA, we can provide technical assistance for energy efficiency, renewable energy investments, really targeting uh, public and private uh, buildings, innovative urban transport projects, and, and many others. In addition to, to all those investments, which I uh, mentioned uh, so far, uh, in order to tackle the crisis and the climate change, more digitalization is also needed. Uh, Really, most really recently, we all realized that uh, uh, really pandemic underlined really forcefully the need for action for for digitalization, uh, and this is an area where we are ready also to provide uh, financing and support. Uh, our economists in the bank, our economic team, uh, made a recent um, survey, investment survey of the European companies. And the results of the survey are telling us that really the COVID pandemic and also climate change uh, challenge are really creating uh, even greater structural investment needs in, in digital transformation. Uh, but at the same time, we, as a result of our survey, we see that companies are really planning to cut down investments, investments uh, related to, to uh, climate change, uh, and they are really negatively affected by, by the pandemic, by the pandemic, and also investments in digitalization and innovation were affected, are and are affected by the by the pandemic uh, as well. So we need to really to make sure that uh, all viable companies do not face finance constraints, and they are, are really able to adapt uh, by investing in digitalization, in green technologies. Uh, and, uh, and really, this is the only way to, 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 to build a competitive economy of, of the country, of the region, uh, because uh, really the, the, next, uh, the next way of industrial transformation is, uh, is, is, is here with us. So really, we need to adopt, uh, to adopt very quickly. As part of our analysis, as part of our economics uh, survey, we see that adoption of digital technologies by the European companies is growing, but not yet where it should be. And there still uh, there is a gap. For example, if we compare with the United States. By last year, we saw that European companies have has still uh, uh, not adopted any digital technologies. 37% of the European companies have not adopted digital technologies compared to 27% in United States. So we are still lagging behind and uh, we, need to, we need to catch up. Uh, we need to catch up and we need to, to invest more to close this, uh, this gap. And here, the European Investment Bank, we can play a, a decisive role by providing uh, available, which we have available specific target, targeting, uh, targeted financing for digital infrastructure, supporting R&D and innovation, both in the public and in the private sector, and also, of course, supporting uh, enabling environment and infrastructure, such as municipal or regional digital hubs, uh, for example. And uh, here I could also mention a very good example we have with the support of our uh, advisory hub. Uh, we have a project helping the region of Stara Zagora to assess the market potential and to, be, to build a business case for the development of a laboratory for virtual reality. 
uh, that will host uh, R&D activities, fostering uh, collaboration uh, with uh, between investors, universities, and innovative industries. So we are there already to working with colleagues to provide uh, this uh, um, to provide this uh, this uh, this specific support. So in conclusion. Uh, ensuring a smart and sustainable recovery by, by really deployment uh, of uh, the twin transition agenda, as we call it, uh, will be decisive in, in really shaping the future of our regions, of, of the country, and also of our overall European economies. And uh, we, as uh, the European Bank, and uh, we, are, we are ready, we stand ready to play our part uh, to provide necessary support for digital, for green recovery, and for just transition of, uh, of the regions. So you can count on us, and we are really ready to, to work with all of you in close cooperation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Pavlova. It's good to know that we have a stable and reliable partner. Uh, and uh, thank you for the information that you shared with us. It's um, very important to know that um, uh, it, it's not only uh, when we talk about the financial instruments, but it's also important to note that uh, you can provide also technical uh, assistance. And yes, indeed, in order to be more competitive, we need to be, uh, we need to catch up. Yeah, and uh, the technology is uh, the right uh, thing and the right way to, uh, uh, to do that. So thank you very much once again, and um, I would like to give the floor to Mr. Vladimir Danilov, who is CEO, Fund of um, Manager of Financial Instruments in Bulgaria, who will also give us a little bit of information about um, what kind of instruments uh, that uh, we can benefit from this region of Zagora. Thank you, Rosita. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, uh, distinguished colleagues and uh, speakers. Uh, I'm very glad and thank you very much for, for this invitation to take part uh, in this dialogue about the transformation of the industrial profile of uh, Stara Zagora region. Definitely, uh, this transition will be a big endeavor and uh, sound challenging uh, at this point. Still, uh, we know that in Europe, there are 12 member states and 41 regions that are heading the same way. That means that uh, those uh, 41 regions are going, to, uh, are going to go through more or less the same challenges, similar challenges, and there will be lots of and many opportunities for collaboration, collaboration between Stara Zagora region and also Kirsten Dio and Pernik region. Uh, with uh, those others uh, 41 um, uh, regions in Europe to exchange know-how, to exchange lessons learned, and of course, uh, someday probably some business transactions could uh, uh, occur between those uh, regions. So uh, it should be also uh, an exciting time. What we need actually to uh, successfully reshape the economy of, uh, of a particular region it's good that we have the transition mechanism in place, which is going to support the process, uh, the whole process. But um, also we need to be coherent in terms of communication with the local people, with the local business community, and to be really proactive to embrace the change and the support the creation of uh, new industries in Stara Zagora region. And since we are talking about uh, how to fund the change, uh, there was already very valuable information shared by uh, Mrs. Pavlova from EIB before me, and she already uh, started and enhanced uh, the benefits of uh, using uh, financial instruments uh, for this transition. And I'm going to complement her words, and I'm going to tell more about uh, the instruments that were already structured by the fund of funds and how those instruments uh, could be handy in the process of uh, transition. I'm going to share my uh, presentation. Um, do you see it now? Thank you. And um, well, uh, pretty much uh, starting here, uh, I would like to share that uh, whatever economy we are aiming to have had at the end in terms of uh, Stara Zagora, the new economy that uh, we are uh, aiming to have, uh, definitely we are willing this economy to be a sustainable one and to be resilient for uh, the challenges of future and also uh, for some of the economic crisis that uh, 
are uh, coming uh, every 10 years or so, like uh, following the global economy uh, cycles. So as Mrs. Pavlova already uh, started, I would like to share that uh, whenever we are willing to support a sustainable economy, we definitely put financial instruments into the uh, equation. Why? Because very often uh, uh, financial instruments are intervening in the fields where other traditional financial institutions like banks are not willing or they can't really intervene in that field. And because those four days, we are going to talk about innovative companies, about digital transformation, everything is heading into innovative direction. That means those companies that we are willing to be created into Stara Zagora region and to grow up from Stara Zagora to be uh, global leaders, probably those are going to be very innovative companies and probably now the only way for them to be supported financially is through a different financial instruments. So that's why that's where financial instruments intervene. Also, as it was mentioned earlier, financial instruments are mobilizing private resources, but also they engage private money. And uh, this way, the resources are multiplied. This is how we achieve this leverage uh, effect. For example, the fund of funds in the period of 2014-2020 uh, we had the mandates to manage around 1.2 billion lever, but we calculated that uh, in case we invest this public resource, that is going to also engage additional 2.7 billion lever. That means 4 billion lever investment into the big Bulgarian economy. Of course, financial instruments are one way to the other meant to be returned. So those money, they should be, or should be recycled, returned. That means that we are going to be able to reinvest those money back into the economy of the country. And of course, financial instruments, one of the main characteristics of that is that uh, they usually support investment projects that are uh, economically viable and that uh, are generating returns or income. And when there is a return or an income in the equation, that is already a promise for a sustainable economic uh, uh, investment. And of course, when we are using financial instruments, we are combining the uh, public knowledge, but also with the knowledge of uh, private entities, because uh, usually financial instruments are executed by private organizations. I'm going to talk about that in, in just a few minutes. Then we are combining the public and the private knowledge, but also we are making sure that we are fulfilling some policy goals. And also now we have these policy goals to reduce the carbon emissions and to regenerate a new economy for Stara Zagora uh, regions. So those are in general, some of the uh, benefits uh, and uh, uh, the arguments for us to use uh, financial instruments. And of course, to support the development of sustainable economy or the new economy of Stara Zagora to be a sustainable and uh, resilient for the challenges of the uh, future. A few words about uh, where we are in terms of the financial instruments that are structured uh, from the fund of funds. Uh, what you see right now are the programs that uh, the fund of funds was uh, uh, managing uh, under the uh, multi uh, annual financial frame 2014 2020. Uh, those were four operational programs and uh, the program for rural development. I'm uh, talking about those programs because still the resources under those programs are about to be uh, disbursed in the next three years. So those are resources, those are financial instruments, money on the market, uh, even today. So business ecosystem from uh, Stara Zagora could benefit and start uh, dialogue with those uh, fund managers even today and to support their investments. I'm talking for private companies that are that could uh, uh, approach uh, fund managers of fund the funds but also Stara Zagora as a, a public sector. So fund of funds, as I said, uh, we've been managing uh, uh, all those uh, uh, operational problems. Uh, and um, whatever I'm going to be sharing with you today is um, uh, a display of all regional uh, all instruments of regional development and all instruments for uh, business developments that are going to be also enforced into the next multi-annual uh, financial uh, frame. So what we're discussing today is going to be valid for the next program period uh, uh, ahead. So if we're going straight to the financial instruments and uh, what's already on the market, on the left-hand side, you can see uh, some debt instruments for microfinance. You see four organizations that already are in operational 
uh, mode. Those are Unicredit Bank and First Investment Bank and some uh, microfinancing organizations like Syscredit and Microfond. Those four organizations are, uh, are granting loans for uh, startups, for scale-ups, but also for social, small and medium uh, enterprises. I'm going to get into details and numbers in just a few minutes. What you can see on the right-hand side is our portfolio of uh, equity uh, instruments. And uh, you see this leather-like uh, picture that shows that no matter at what uh, level of development is particular company in Bulgaria, there is a fund manager that is going to support their uh, investment. If we look at this slide, we can see better those four uh, fund managers that are executing our equity uh, instrument. If you combine the numbers, you see that over 200 million level are now uh, on the market for equity uh, investments. And um, I would like to stop by with a few words about uh, every uh, of the fund managers just to uh, educate the audience uh, which fund manager is responsible for which type of investments. On the left-hand side, you see Innovation Capital, which is our fund managers, which is responsible for companies in a very, very early stage of development. It might not have a company, but it might have only an idea. So companies or entrepreneurs, they can just apply with these guys and they can get uh, financed by 200 level, 200,000 level in order for them to um, uh, you know, continue validating their product. If there are companies that already have a proven product or they have a incorporated a company already, they might uh, also get in touch with Vitusha Venture Partners, who are our next fund uh, manager. They are going to invest uh, in uh, a little bit more than 150 companies for the next uh, three years. They are managing around 50 million uh, level for the next uh, three years. And uh, companies can receive an investment up to 1 million uh, level. If there is a company with a larger or more substantial uh, financial need, they could uh, also get in touch with New Vision 3, which is our third equity fund. They're also managing a little bit more than 50 million uh, level for the next uh, three years. And this is only the public resources, which could multiply uh, in, uh, within the years. We don't know yet uh, what is going to be their leverage effect. Still, a New Vision 3 could uh, really answer for investments up to 2 million uh, level. And where we are talking about companies which are in more mature stage of um, uh, development, uh, such companies that are willing to do uh, international expansion to conquer new markets or to invest in additional capacity uh, uh, investment to enlarge their capacity, they can apply to Morningside Hill, which is the fourth uh, fund manager and they are responsible for uh, more mature investments. They can support companies for up to 7 million uh, level. So those are the, the, this is the portfolio of uh, equity uh, uh, fund managers. You know, equity investment is uh, when a company get uh, financed and in return, the company is giving away some of their uh, work or capital. Some of the shares of this company are becoming uh, owned own by this um, uh, fund manager. I'm going forward towards the COVID-19 guarantees, which is um, one of our COVID-19 uh, initiative to overcome the difficulties for the Bulgarian uh, business. And of course, to uh, support brave companies that uh, wouldn't stop their investment processes to continue further and to be able to access uh, capital. So how guarantees work? We issue guarantee to banks and banks are translating that guarantee into loans towards the business. Now we are issuing around 160 million level of guarantee towards uh, uh, eight banks, uh, soon to be nine banks. And uh, those banks are going to provide uh, loans to small and medium enterprises in Bulgaria. As you can see, uh, the cap is 1.5 million uh, euro. And uh, there are certain benefits about the uh, companies that are going to apply for those loans. And the benefits are such as um, decreased interest rate or re relaxed collateral uh, requirements. Anytime when we're talking about financial instruments, there should be some benefits for the business. So the best approach for companies that are willing to benefit from these financial instruments is to speak with some of the banks, which are at the bottom of uh, this slide, and to ask uh, about the product uh, that is uh, 
uh, drafted with the financial instrument from the fund of uh, fund of funds. Also, one of the I'm going to, to our next uh, financial instruments, which is uh, uh, our largest uh, so far. This is the uh, Urban Development Fund. The Urban Development Fund is our largest instrument with um, mobilized public uh, capital of uh, 540 million level. And, uh, and those are investments that are about to support the development of regions in terms of uh, uh, infrastructure. So all types of infrastructure like, uh, uh, like industrial zones, commercial zones, sport facilities or cultural facilities, they could be financed with uh, these uh, financial instruments. And here the uh, portfolio is open for public companies, for private companies, but also for a private sector. So cities, municipalities, the 39 largest uh, uh, cities in Bulgaria, could apply uh, for financing from this instrument. Also, public-private partnerships are also very welcome when it comes to development of infrastructure that is going to uh, improve the quality of life of particular of a particular uh, region, is going to uh, make the region more attractive for visitors, for investors, or for people to come to live in this uh, uh, region. What is, what is very um, important uh, for this instrument to be mentioned is that, is that uh, the maturity of those loans is longer than the traditional banks are offering. So we can go up to 15 or 20 years of a loan, which is uh, uh, quite of a benefit. Also, uh, reduced uh, uh, interest rates uh, are part of the characteristics of this, um, of this uh, instrument. At the beginning, when I show you the scale uh, and the picture on the left uh, uh, with the microfinancing organizations, I wanted just to enterprises. Here, the uh, loan could be up to 50,000 euro. And of course, the benefits of the, for the business uh, are lower interest rate or lower collateral, collateral uh, requirements. Three more financial institutions are offering similar microfinance uh, uh, solution. Those are First Investment Bank, CIS Credit, and Microfund. Uh, which are offering, again, loans for startups and scale-ups, for social entrepreneurs, but also for different craftsmen, for freelancers, or for self-employed people. And here, the size of the loan could be up to 50,000 level. Again, uh, relaxed uh, conditions for the collateral and also reduced interest rate is, is available for this um, uh, financial instrument. So going back to the topic that we are discussing today, um, how we are going to change or reshape uh, and why we do we need to reshape the economy of those uh, regions? Uh, what is the scene? What is the as is uh, situation? In Bulgaria, we have three regions which are highly dependent on coal and mining industries. Those are Stara Zagod, Pernik and uh, Houston Deal. And it's estimated that immediately 15,000 uh, people could lose their job, but also uh, those are the immediate people that might uh, lose their job, but another 50,000 people are in danger. So um, our goal for the next uh, couple of years is to really uh, offer alternatives for those people to become entrepreneurs or to, uh, for them to be employed by other new industries or new type of businesses that are going to pop up uh, into the uh, region of Stara Zagora and of course the other three uh, regions in Bulgaria. So far, three regions were approved by the European Commission uh, for this uh, just transition uh, mechanism to be supported to go smoothly under this uh, transition. But also in Bulgaria, we have also five more uh, highly dependent regions uh, which are neighboring with those three core regions. And we hope that uh, also the European Commission is going to use the regional approach. So uh, there's going to be uh, also support for those uh, five highly dependent uh, regions to smoothly go under this uh, uh, transition. 
I think Mrs. Uh, Pavlova, uh, talking before me, uh, already uh, defined very well which are the three pillars of the just transition, uh, uh, just transition mechanism. And um, I would like to also uh, only share that um, uh, European Investment Bank is a, a strategic partner of uh, of Funder Funds. They've been together with us since the concept, since the establishment of um, uh, our organization. So uh, um, we are really very excited to uh, support them in the on the way of uh, their developments. And uh, actually, everything that um, she expressed that is available as resources and is also as a technical support. Uh, for the Bulgarian regions. So uh, we hope that we are going to be also a uh, supporter over those uh, projects. Another fact that I would like to uh, mention here is that it, it's already approved by the European Commission that uh, the new program, uh, the program for the regional development uh, uh, is um, uh, already, uh, it's already approved that they are going to be managing this uh, close to 1.2 billion euro planned by the European uh, Regional Development Fund. And those are money that are going to be poured into our economy. And that is also uh, due to the active uh, participants of uh, Mrs. Nisi Nikolova, uh, who, she, who was uh, really heading and leading those uh, uh, negotiations. So this is to, those are two facts that I'm going to share on this screen. And uh, I would like to share here what are actually the uh, linkages and of the just transition process and uh, the instruments of the fund of funds. All those instruments that I presented in the slides uh, above, uh, they were instruments that are uh, supporting the innovative uh, ecosystem uh, in Bulgaria and then in Stara Zagora region too, also promoting the employment, the self-employment encouraging the uh, entrepreneurs from different regions in Bulgaria to start their businesses, to explore their ideas, for their ideas to be financed by different uh, instruments. So uh, for them to be able to, of course, fulfill their, fulfill their dreams, to deliver the value that I think they need to deliver at the market, but also to sustain an economy for uh, Bulgaria. Also, uh, our instruments are again aligned with the just transition process in terms of promotion of uh, entrepreneurship with focus on sectors with um, uh, high added value. You know, like in Bulgaria, we are not no, no longer competing over low cost. And uh, now we are competing over uh, precision, over quality and over uh, high value added. So this is going to be the new economy that we are willing to uh, create. And this is also uh, when we're talking about uh, status agora. Of course, our um, uh, financial instruments are also responsible for urban development and making our regions attractive for uh, visitors, for tourists, but also for investors and for people to start to live in. And uh, of course, our instruments are also um, focused in energy efficiency and renewables. And of course, uh, uh, all new business models that are related with the circular economy and of course, with the industrial transform, uh, industrial transformation like Industry 4.0 and digital transformation uh, uh, in general. So that's why um, we believe that uh, the uh, financial instruments that we already have uh, structured and that are under um, uh, investment mode right now, and also the financial instruments that we are going to structure in the next uh, uh, multi-annual financial frame they are going to be aligned with the just transition process and they are going to be able to support very handy the uh, reshapement of the economy of uh, Stara Zagora and of course the other two co-regions like Custendio and uh, Berni. So thank you very much and I'm going to be uh, very glad to answer some questions um, of the audience if there are such. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Danayov. Uh, we will wait until the end of uh, uh, this event uh, to see if uh, there are questions from the audience. Um, and because we are running a little bit out of time, I will directly give the floor to Mr. Cvetan Kulanov, uh, who is acting head of European Commission representation in Bulgaria, with whom I used to work also. Uh, who will give a little bit of um, information concerning the priorities um, uh, that will be included in the recovery and resilience facility. 
Mr. Kilano. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, both for the invitation and to, for the opportunity to share the, the state of play, the, 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 the views of the European Commission, uh, but also listen to, to what the other panelists have to say and what, um, you know, uh, actually the audience thinks and wants to hear. I'll try to be uh, try to be quick so that we catch up a little bit with uh, the time. I'm maybe not going to share my slide. Maybe the previous panelist can, can close his screen sharing uh, so that we have the opportunity. Um, so uh, basically uh, what I wanted to give you, I think the plan itself is out there for uh, almost one year now so uh, i'm not gonna not gonna start from the uh, from the from the beginning i'm just gonna give you some some uh, logic some rationale uh, what is behind it why are we doing all of this and then uh, happy to have a discussion to have uh, some questions or you know uh, if uh, somebody's uh, interested in discussing further uh, we have the representation with the commission are are there to be to be found so happy to happy to discuss uh, so the, the recovery and resilience facility has two main aspects recovery and resilience uh, on the recovery side i think it's it's pretty clear the crisis has affected the european economy so it needs to pick itself up and it uh, needs to, 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 to recover. Why do we need joint European action? Because the crisis has affected disproportionately uh, the, different, the different European economies. So those who need the most support may not be in the best position to, to, to support themselves as the need for, for joint action. Uh, now that the resilience part is a bit more complicated, to become more resilient, the, the, the European economies uh, need to change. And uh, another uh, word for, for, for change uh, is reform. Uh, and here again, when we look at the EU as a whole, we see that uh, certain countries are uh, further ahead than others. So again, we have some disparities uh, that create the need for joint action. We need to support those who have more catching up to do so that in the end, everybody is better off. Uh, of course, structural funds remain available, uh, uh, but here, as previous uh, speakers said, the focus of the recovery and resilience facility is on two main priorities, the cleaner, greener economy, and the more digital economy. Uh, those priorities come from the economic transformation that we already observe. So it's not somebody who thought up of those two things and let's let's go this way. No, the, the, the changes, the, the economic changes are already taking place. The role of the facility is to help the transition, to accelerate the transition. Uh, and uh, if you, look at, if you look at the global economy, the European economy, you will see that over a period of years, this change has been taking place. If you look at the Bulgarian economy, you will see that the uh, carbon emissions have decreased. I'm not gonna quote numbers and go into details, but, but has continued to grow since the nineties and has actually reduced it, its carbon emissions. So it's a process. It's not something that ha happens now. But now is the, the good opportunity, the good moment, the important moment to support it and critically to ensure that nobody is affected negatively. What does this mean? Everybody knows that some people will be affected negatively. The role of the, of the facility and, and of all the supporting instruments are to make sure that the transition is just, and we already heard about this. So making sure that whether it's a worker, a business person or their family, they have alternatives, they have opportunities that are presented to them. And this is the, the, the big challenge. 
now uh, on the on the stars Agora region it's uh, exactly one year since i was last uh, physically in, in stars Agora and the maritza region uh, i'm sure that i would have uh, probably you know uh, rented a place by now with so many visits planned things things change but but uh, economy and the priorities are a bit uh, longer term and and they don't uh, tend to change so so quickly which is which is good um we all know that the, the very large part of bulgaria's electricity generating capacity is concentrated there in the region we know the economic argument which is pretty simple rising prices of uh, permits for the carbon emissions uh, are making the coal-fueled power plants less and less competitive compared to other sources of uh, electricity generating sources. Um, so the change in the economic sense is inevitable. Of course, in, in public policy, we know that it's not just pure economics that are the, the main driver. And we have uh, people with uh, a lot of experience on this um, in, the, in, in the event. So uh, it's clear that what we are talking about is, uh, you know, uh, workers, their families, the human stories, that actually get affected uh, the numbers looking at them on the on the large scale of, of bulgaria's employment are not so large we heard some numbers uh, if you look at the percentages it's 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 not it's not that much however the the, the human side is is very very important and in those regions we know that those uh, you know those industries are the main source of of income uh, for for both businesses and and uh, workers uh, and here is where the focus of of the work should be. Uh, of course, if you if you ask people, do you want you know a better job with with more money? Yes, of course, most people will say yes. Do you want your family to live in a cleaner environment, uh, have a eat healthier food? Uh, again, probably the answer mostly will be yes. If you ask them, do you want uh, the future generations to have you know more economic opportunities? Uh, uh the answer would be mostly yes uh, but the challenge is how 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 to do it and here is the, the 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 commission proposal for the just transition mechanism uh this is uh, ongoing work how to design it it is for the, the the regions that are in process of transition and here i think we should focus again on the economic side and not so much on the regional division of a certain country so we have to look where the people actually are and then try uh, to support them and make sure that they receive the necessary support and not divide ourselves on, on you know regions that have uh, only virtual uh, borders uh, so commission is helping both with the technical support to design those just transition plans but also with funding the just transition um now the, the the challenge again is, is is to make sure that the money gets to the people businesses and workers as quickly as possible but also that the money gets to those people that need it the most and that the right uh, policies and measures are put in place to make sure that uh, uh, you know transition is a success and uh, all of us live better lives in the end i finish positively thank you very much and i'm happy to take questions later yes thank you Svetan, for this uh, uh, positive finishing of uh, um, your presentation uh, and yes um, very important things to do now it's to you know to make our just transition plans and the territorial plans um, good enough so that we can make um, you know this transition smooth and to be sustainable and that is why we're going to talk about this with Miss uh, uh, Romana Grozevo. Uh, she will present and give a little bit of information about um, the just transition plan of Stara Zagora. Uh, she's executive uh, director of regional and economic development agency and also member of the Board of Directors of the Industrial Zone, uh, Stara Zagora. Uh, thank you very much, Rosie. I hope you hear me well. Uh, 
So I should say in the beginning that I'm uh, not so worried about the transition uh, process in the region because I've heard that there is, there is enough money to, to be done. Uh, but of course, you're right. We should prepare ourselves very well. And uh, it's mean to, to plan this transition for the next 10 years. We have at least 10 years to do that. To do that but before to talking about the the plan i'd like to say some word for the region of uh, stara zagora uh, our uh, event is uh, broadcasted through facebook live and probably there there are people who are not so familiar with the region and why it is so important to talking about this uh, transition actually uh it's um, the sixth largest, uh, Stara Zagora is the sixth largest city in Bulgaria and the region also in, is one of the, the largest in the country. Uh, it's uh, one of the most developed right after the capital uh, city, Sofia. You can see on the presentation that the GDP per capita reach uh, uh, 70,000 uh, million for the in, it, in the second in the country, registering 8% uh, growth compared to 2016. Uh, of course, these uh, figures are for uh, two or three years ago, before the pandemic, before the cor coronavirus to impact so negatively the economy of the country, of the European Union, of the world. But uh, this is why it's, uh, the worries here in the region are so, uh, so big because this transition, uh, of course, brings some risks, uh, especially for the people who are working in the uh, in this uh, mining uh, complex in the power plants. Also, already uh, being mentioned how many people they are directly uh, working there are. 14, around 14 people, 14,000 people, but uh, uh, the linked uh, companies and uh, uh, indirect jobs are almost uh, between 50,000 and uh, 100,000. It depends how they will be count. Uh, so the, the three biggest power plants uh, are located here in the region. Uh, Two of them are uh, private, one of them is uh, state-owned, and Maritza East is, uh, as energy complex, is uh, the main uh, producer and provider of electricity for the country. And it's uh, uh, the, large, uh, the largest lignite coal basin uh, also covers territories not only in the region of Stara Zagora but also neighbor regions as uh, uh, Sliven, mainly Novosegora city, Yambul, and uh, Dimitrovgrad, which is part of the region of uh, Haskovo. This is why talking about this uh, transition plan, the commission is focused not only on these three main uh, regions, as uh, Mr. Daniel said, Stara Zagora, Houston, Dill, and Pernik, but uh, also is uh, focusing on these uh, periphery um, uh, territories of uh, Nova Zagora, Yambo, and uh, Dimitrovgrad. Uh, these days, Terra Zagora, of course, uh, face the challenge of the coal intensive and dependency of the uh, low carbon economy. Uh, really, it will really be very, um, very important how it will be done in order these people not to lose their jobs, the economy, not to lose its. Uh, uh, it's uh, dynamic, it's a very good level of, uh, of uh, development. Sorry for this uh, 
interruption. I don't uh, uh, present uh, the three pillars of the just transition mechanism. They are already be, being presented by Mrs. Uh, Pavlova and Mr. Danilov. Uh, this information will be for the people who will visit the, the web uh, of the event after that uh, to be more familiar what exactly will be supported just to say that uh, um, it's uh, really that the, the the just transition mechanism really uh, cover all of these uh, important um, topics. Uh, the social uh, sector is also in the focus of, uh, of the just transition, bearing in mind that uh, these uh, people who are working in the mine complex, uh, in the power plants should be um, rescued in order to, to find uh, new job uh, opportunities. Uh, hope in the region because of all of the investment that uh, are supposed to be attracted and developed but within next uh, years. What exactly uh, Stara Zagora is done till the moment? Uh, really the territorial just transition plan of Stara Zagora is uh, under construction because uh, um, that this process uh, started in the end of uh, last year in the middle of December uh, and the available just transition fund for, for Bulgaria, you can see the figures. Um, in the term of reference of the European Commission for the consultant to be selected, Star Zagora is in the focus as the most, uh, um, as uh, the expectations are to be most impacted by the, by the transition. And uh, unfortunately, the dialogue here in the region started with some very um, significant delay. And now actually we, we should act in very limited time to prepare ourselves how to deal with, the, um, with all of the challenges that will be faced by people as uh, citizens, by companies, by local uh, authorities, which will be impacted. Because for the moment, uh, what is very probably important to say that uh, two of the municipalities, um, Golubovo and Turadnevo, uh, where actually are uh, located uh, mine complex uh, headquarter, let's say, and uh, three power plants, um, they are direct uh, contributors to the municipalities uh, in their budgets and stopping their working, which means that these local budgets will be also very, very, very uh, negative, uh, affected, negatively affected. So what we can support uh, within the just transition plan of Stara Zagora, um, economic diversification, uh, small and medium-sized enterprises, new companies, which is very important to be underlined here that the, uh, the just transition plan uh, support uh, for the business is open also for uh, big companies. Uh, it uh, was uh, mentioned during the last session of the just transition platform created by the European Commission for Regions as uh, Stara Zagora, Mr. Dan already said that the, the regions in Europe are 41 in 12 countries and um, what also land rehabilitation which is very important for the successful development of different type of uh, economic uh, um, sectors including um, uh, even food production. Uh, I'll talk about uh, this a little bit later. Uh, clean energy and energy efficiency. Uh, energy efficiency is also in the focus of the uh, National Recovery and Resilience Plan. Uh, digitalization, of course, uh, circular economy, reskilling of uh, people, something that I already mentioned, job search assistance, etc. Uh, uh, list is uh, available in the Just Transition Fund regulation, which is for the moment uh, is not accepted uh, in its final version, but uh, some significant changes are not uh, expected in, to be done uh, these uh, last uh, days. What could not be supported for sure is the fossil fuels, nuclear energy, and uh, of course, company in financial difficulty, which are not available, which are not eligible for funding in uh, European structural and investment funds as, as whole. 
uh, the funding rules, uh, it was uh, one of the questions uh, that were very uh, hard discussed here in the in the region of Stairs Go last month. What the rules will be, what kind of projects could be funded, what kind of project uh, in this sense should be uh, identified by the stakeholders in order to be uh, included in the just transition plan. Last uh, week we had uh, six uh, stakeholder meetings um, which is uh, held under the CARP project. The CARP is project that is uh, implemented by the uh, Regional Economic Development Agency of Starozegor as lead partner and uh, nine other partners from all around Europe, from regions as uh, Starozegor, but not only, also regions where uh, uh, we developed their uh, renewable energy um, sources very active and very successful last years in order to such a good practices to be exchanged and uh, um, uh, relevant policies also to be developed and implemented and applied at, uh, in other regions like Starosikora. So the rules, the funding rules are the same as uh, EFDF uh, uh, fund, uh, they are very well known here in Bulgaria and not only uh, what kind of projects could be funded uh, the, in terms of measures as we, um, this European manner of talking, soft measures, uh, which means uh, reskilling, uh, digitalization skills, uh, uh, building, uh, but also investment uh, will be eligible for funding, which means that local authorities and businesses and uh, civil organization could apply, uh, could um, uh, first could suggest their, uh, could offer their uh, identified project ideas to be included into the just transition plan and after that to apply for uh, funding. Uh, as I said, officially the planning process started in the end of 2020, in the middle of December, with selection of a consultancy company uh, for all of the, for these three regions by the European Commission. Uh, it's Price Waterhouse Cooper. Uh, the good news is that the, the company is selected also to prepare such kind of plans in other regions of Europe, which are in the, the transition uh, period, which means that another good practices could be uh, shared, could be applied, could be used uh, here in, in Starosikor. Uh, as I said, also a stakeholders meeting uh, started in the middle of 2018 when the uh, the, the CARP project implementation uh, started also, and uh, till the moment, uh, uh, except these uh, stakeholder meetings, uh, also uh, very successful international social policy dialogue uh, uh, were held in the end of September last year. Uh, the event reached uh, 20,000 people through the live uh, stream in Facebook. And actually, thanks to this project, we could uh, I could say that uh, um, here in region, we already have a well-structured dialogue between stakeholders. I mean, mining uh, complex, um, uh, power plants, uh, uh, trade unions, which are very, very important stakeholder in this process because uh, uh, I, it could not be a uh, surprise, but the people are really worried about their jobs, about the, their future, uh, what will happen when uh, this uh, mine is uh, cut and the uh, power plants are uh, closed. Uh, this is why the, to collaborate with trade unions is really very important. Also, local authorities are very active during these uh, stakeholder meetings. But the good news is that Stairs Gora, and thanks to uh, uh, Mrs. Pavlova and Mr. Danil that underlined this uh, and focused in their presentations to, to the region. Stairs Gora will receive funding by EU structural and investment funds, by recovery and resilience plan, and by the just transition uh, fund. Uh, about the what will be the, the main, uh, what are, will be the main priorities um, for development, which will be included in the just transition plan, of course, economic diversification, clean energy, something very uh, important. 
uh, biotechnologies because uh, here in the region we have very good uh, conditions to, to do that because of also track university which multidisciplinarity actually cover all of the branch of life and science um, life uh, sciences uh, energy efficiency because they have uh, these measures actually have very significant potential to reduce uh, carbon uh, emission digitalization we already started uh, with the uh, project idea to be um, to be created uh, uh, digital innovation hub part of the european network which is uh, built now and uh, this uh, virtual laboratory which Mrs. Pozlova mentioned uh, in its uh, um, uh, speech is actually, I am very happy to announce, actually the base for this digital innovation help and thanks to the uh, very strong support of the European Investment Bank to this uh, advisory hub, we had a very good uh, business plan and financial model how to run and how it's to be a uh, sustainable uh, investment in the last year. Currently, the Truckee University, uh, which uh, actually continued development of this project, uh, is uh, working on it uh, very hard in the end of uh, April is uh, expected the, the laboratory to be installed and to be open for uh, its operation. It will start with um, uh, training programs, with uh, science uh, uh, programs also, uh, which will be uh, held by the university. Circular economy, which is very important not only for Europe but for the world, in my opinion, and not only because the resources of the planets are limited. We should uh, think uh, about this every time, talking about uh, development, talking about economy, talking about uh, uh, about the future. Reskilling also will be a very um, important uh, part of the territorial just transition plan and here i'd like to say that people who are working in the mining complex in the power plants are uh, actually very well skilled uh, technically skilled uh, person who uh, even will not need such kind of hard uh, uh, reskilling to, to obtain uh, totally new for them uh, job skills or jobs uh, uh, or professional knowledge. This is why we're, uh, how to say, uh, optimist that Stara Zagora could really be one of the main important region for the next uh, uh, year, years uh, for country and for uh, its uh, partners region from Europe. So, uh, we are continue, we'll continue to work. Tomorrow we'll have a meeting, uh, another meeting with, of the stakeholders with the consultancy company. And I think that the next months uh, here in the region will have much more success in preparing this so important just transition plan. You said that money, there is money enough to implement it. So we'll plan and dream um, strongly for this. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thanks to Ms. Uh, Rosova. Indeed, yes, um, um, in our hands, it's the future of uh, the region and uh, we have to prepare well to, uh, to use um, wisely uh, the funds that are uh, available now. So um, we need also a consensus uh, between uh, the partners and uh, the parties that are um, will be influenced by, by this process, this transition process. Um, so we need to prepare very well to, uh, in order at the end to have, um, uh, you know, good economically stable economy and um, by doing that to reach this uh, uh, point, we, we need to have, um, as I said, Consensus at old level, uh, and to and to to have priority areas uh, that are uh, that are most important uh, uh, for the region. So, thank you very much once again, Ms. Brozova, and we are at the end of uh, our event. And thank you very much to Ms. Renata Mihailova. She waited till the end uh, to finally. 
um, present um, what is um, the European Commission decided as a um, um, framework uh, for the next programming period. And she will be uh, presenting actually um, the multi annual financial framework. So, Ms. Mihailova, the floor is yours. Thank you, Rossi. Uh, just to share my presentation first. I hope you can see it. Uh, as you have already heard details about the financial instruments and the recovery and resilience uh, facility, and also about the just transition plan of Stara Zagora, I will now give a general overview of the multi-annual financial framework for the current financial period 2021-2027 and uh, the recovery instrument next generation EU. I will also present the financial allocations for Bulgaria under the separate MFF policies and under the recovery instrument. Uh, as you probably know, the new annual financial framework outlines the EU most important priorities for a certain period. It is decided for every seven years, and uh, the last one being the period 2014-2020. The new financial framework for the current uh, financial period was adopted after lengthy and exhaustive uh, negotiations between the member states and after that between the Council of the EU and the European Parliament. Altogether, it took two and a half years, starting in May 2018 during the Bulgarian presidency of the Council and uh, finishing su successfully in December last year. The negotiations were additionally complicated and delayed due to the crisis following the COVID-19 outbreak, which required the Commission to present in May 2020 a revised proposal for the next MFF, accompanied by a proposal for a temporary recovery instrument. Although these extraordinary circumstances, the agreement achieved allows for the start in, uh, this year, in 2021, the implementation of the new MFF programs. On uh, this slide, you can see a graph uh, which presents the amounts and the shares of each policy areas in the current new annual financial framework. We believe that the parameters and modalities of the agreed MFF will allow for the achievement of all ambitious objectives and policy priorities set for the current seven years period. As you can see on the graph, the key policies for Bulgaria, the cohesion policy and the um, uh, common agricultural policy, are again among the big priority areas funded uh, by uh, the European budget. Having in mind the restriction posed by the current crisis and the withdrawal of one of the biggest contributors to the EU budget, an adequate level of funding for these two important areas was agreed. Uh, EU funding will also be geared with a special attention towards new priorities across the EU policy areas such as green and digital transition. As already mentioned, the MFF negotiations were seriously affected by the uh, current crisis uh, caused by the COVID-19. An innovative solution for this extraordinary situation was found through the establishment of the temporary and targeted recovery instrument called Next Generation EU. In order to provide the EU with the means to address the challenges posed by the uh, pandemic, the Commission will, uh, will be authorized to borrow 750 billion euro on behalf of the Union on the capital markets, as the plan for European recovery needs massive public and private investments at European level to create jobs and to repair the immediate damage caused by the pandemic, while at the same time supporting the EU green and digital priorities. Therefore, the borrowed 750 billion euro for the recovery instrument will be transferred for implementation to the EU programs listed on this slide. As you can see, the bigger part of this amount, namely 390 billion euro, will be allocated in the form of grants and some guarantees. The rest, 360, will be for loans which the member states will be eligible to apply for. Uh, one important precondition for ensuring the funding for the recovery instrument is the final adoption by all member states as soon as possible, as a matter of urgency actually, of the new own resources decision, as this de decision includes uh, provisions for the borrowing. 
the Bulgarian Parliament adopted it on the 5th of February this year, and we are among the, among the first member states successfully fulfilled this process. And uh, on my uh, this is my last uh, my last uh, slide, which contains maybe the most important information for all of us: the expected envelopes for Bulgaria under the multi-annual financial framework in the next generation EU. As you can see, the, mass, uh, the main funds Bulgaria will benefit from are those under the cohesion policy and the common agricultural policy. Uh, let me just mention that Bulgaria is among the only three member states which received a maximum of 7% increase of the cohesion package, as well as additional targeted 200 million euro for uh, its less developed regions. Under the next generation EU, the most significant funding is expected from the grants under the recovery and resilience facility. Uh, and uh, I will finish my presentation with the new Just Transition Fund, which is the first pillar of the Just Transition Mechanism and which will support the economic diversification and, and the reconversion of the territories concerned. The Just Transition Fund will receive funds both from the multi-annual financial framework and from the uh, recovery instrument. Bulgaria will receive the fifth highest national package from this fund, amounting to the total funding of almost 1.2 billion euro. And calculated per capita, the funding for Bulgaria is the second highest in the whole EU, uh, 165 euros. Thank you very much. Rossi, we cannot hear you. Yeah, sorry, sorry about this. Yeah, uh, I said that I uh, wanted to thank Ms. Mikhailova, who is uh, uh, head of uh, EU budget department at the uh, Ministry of Finance. And uh, uh, also thanks uh, to her uh, for waiting until the end of uh, our event. Uh, uh, I, I hope uh, that um, this event for all of you was very interesting. Uh, we uh, have now a Q&A session and if um, uh, some of um, the audience have uh, something that would like to ask our panelists, now is the time. Uh, meanwhile, I would like to give you a little bit of information concerning our, our event. Um, uh, we will continue uh, tomorrow as well. Um, starting at um, 11 um, uh, o'clock Bulgarian time. Um, so we are waiting for you also to join. It will be also very interesting. Uh, we will present um, uh, the, um, uh, um, the energy and climate change plan tomorrow. We will also have interactions um, uh, from the Ministry of Labor and Social Policy. Uh, they will uh, tell us a little bit about um, uh, actions uh, that uh, are going to be taken by uh, the authorities with respect to the labor market. Um, uh, we will have also presentations from the Institute for Market Economics. Uh, they will look uh, a little bit um, from the pros and coin, coins point of view of, uh, of this process, the, uh, the transition process. I will also um, uh, give a, a presentation for uh, the current stage of development of um, uh, the city and the region. Um, uh, what else? Uh, we will have also presentation from Ms. Uh, uh, Grozova uh, and Ms. Yulian Popov, who will be our moderator for uh, tomorrow. Uh, so uh, stay tuned for the next uh, couple of days. This is for tomorrow. Tomorrow I will give a bit, a little bit of information about the next two days. Uh, yeah. Mm, if we have any questions, just to see. I think, or we will wait a little bit.
Uh, Rosie, if, uh, if it's possible, I'd like to say thank you to our panelists for their significant contribution for uh, for today and giving us uh, so important information for the um, state of art in the country and uh, focus on uh, what uh, will possible to be done for Sterosigora by this funding which is available, really. And uh, it was interesting for me to hear about uh, uh, multi-annual uh, framework also of the European uh, Commission about the fund of funds because obviously here in Sterosigora will need uh, its uh, support for this uh, uh, co-working space which are going to to open for uh, startup companies and uh, with such a partner i'm really happy and calm that uh, this transition will happen how it do it should be actually thank you so much yeah thank you also once again for uh, for uh, miss iglika vasileva uh, for starting uh, today and to uh, give uh, a light about the um, uh, expectation about the economic development and uh, thank you for the recommendation that you gave in your presentation thanks also from my side uh, and from the municipality side uh, to mr Vladimir danilov uh, also for sharing uh, what kind of instruments that uh, the companies and the startup can use um, and what was I was wanted to say that uh, it is uh, as, a, as a municipality as um, authority that is um, making sure uh, providing uh, a good environment for businesses this is something very important to give information for um, how the businesses can uh, use uh, the development funds um, and this is why your presentation uh, was very interesting as well the presentation of Ms. Uh, Pavlova um, and uh, with this I would like to close um, the first event uh, um, with the focus on Stars Abor and how to make the economy more digitalized. And also thank you very much for those who stay until the end of this event. And we are waiting for you tomorrow morning as well. Bye. Bye. Yeah,